Hey everyone, Shabby Gamer here and welcome back to some more of our Gibraltar Challenge here on Football Manager 2016. Now we are here for an away game of course against Cannons in the first division but of course we're here for the main event of this episode of course a home game against Napoli in the Europa Cup first knockout round. Can't believe we made it there, so happy. And uh, yeah, we're going to really have to put ourselves against some of the top clubs in Europe now. I don't know how well we'll do against Napoli, I'm, I'm feeling we're not going to fare too well, especially since there have been some major development since the last episode i'm absolutely gutted for some of these but first of all let's have a quick look at what we've done since the last time i saw you as you can see we've had a little bit of a clean sweep we had a one we had a nil nil draw against britannia which is the same club we drew against a couple of years ago as well so they've been uh, a bit of a pain in the backside for us it looks like we are going to have another season where we're not going to win every game which is a bit disappointing we have not done that once yet but the problems we're having at the moment is regards to players um so uh Let's have a quick look at our transfer situation. Of course, we have gone through the January transfer window now as well. So, um, let's first have a look at the bad situation then. So, uh, January, where are we? AD Day left and joined Reading. Unfortunately, he had a release clause in his contract due to... Well, that's the only reason I could get him to sign a contract was to uh, to, to have him uh, have a minimum release fee. I'm a bit gutted about that, I must admit. But it's a shame he's gone and uh, we can't really do much about that now. Um, we'll ignore these two for a second because these two are loans anyway. Stefan Dammer, our Australian right back and centre midfielder, wanted to leave and has eventually gone here to Red Bull. Is that Red Bull? Leipzig. Is it Leipzig? In Germany? I think it is. Yeah, Red Bull Leipzig. So a million pounds he's gone as well. And Renato Avola, our left back, has left for a million pounds to go and join uh, Pescara. So that is really disappointing. That's not the end of it either. We're also going to be losing in the summer... Bobby Jones, who's leaving to join Newport. He rejected our contract. This is the one I'm really gutted about, is Nick Harlton. He would not sign a new contract, and now he's joining Barrow on the 1st of July. The problem is with that is he's so close to becoming a Gibraltarian national. Is he going to have enough time? He needs 149 days, and he's going to be joining them on the 1st of July, which is five months. He might just scrape. I'll have to do the maths on that, but he might just scrape gibraltarian nationality before he leaves to join barrow why would you want to join barrow in league two ahead of a club that's playing in the europa league anyway that's really annoying but the worst one here i say worst one Sergio tundi will be leaving us in the summer our attacking right midfielder who we've had now for a good few we've had him for three seasons we brought him for sixty thousand pounds so it's devastating to lose him but at the same time we have managed to sell him for six million pounds so it's disappointing, but at the same time, it's not bad having that much money to spend. So as you can see, I have got a few players lined up to come in in the summer to replace them as well, but we will have a look at that when they do come in permanently. We have got a few players coming in January, even early in January. As you can see, we started off with quite a few players. Um, so the first player we have brought is Dean O'Connor. We've got a bit mad on Irish in this one. He is a attacking midfielder, central midfielder. And he's another one of these players that the scouts have given really good hype to. And when they turn up, they're not fantastic. So hopefully he's got a lot of potential and our coaches aren't very good at judging ability because our scout said he was going to be very good. So I hope that's going to be the case. We paid and we paid 275000 for him. Uh, we picked up Reese Lloyd, an Australian goalkeeper who was a free transfer. He'd been, uh, he'd been released from the uh, centre of excellence. I don't know how good he's going to be, but a free transfer. We needed an extra goalkeeper for our reserves anyway. So it'll just help boost that up really and hopefully we can make something out of him. Uh, Jason McDermott. Now, this is a player I'm excited about. Attacking right midfielder. I've been using him out, obviously, to replace Atundi. I'm sort of gone off playing Atundi now. Now that I know he's leaving, I've sort of been giving some other players an opportunity. And, of course, this guy's come in at the end of December. He's played three games with us already. And in those three games, he has um, not done anything, really. He's not scored any goals or got an assist. Or, but he has got an average rate of 7.13, which is not bad. I think the main problem is, is, obviously, the Irish League runs differently to all the other leagues in Europe. They run, um, I think yearly rather than across the season so um he was completely lacking match fitness when he came in so now i think after his three games he should start to spark into life a bit more and uh, we've got frank collins again another young australian who had been released by the center of excellence on a free transfer again just to sort of boost up our ranks and see if we can make anything out of him. he's a free transfer so if we make a few quid out of him then win-win situation really ryan gaffley another player from sligo i'm a bit mad on sligo he's a defensive midfielder he's got some good mental attributes and some half-decent uh, technical ones as well. They're all going up. Again, another one where the scout said he was very, very good. Very good potential. But the coaches don't have the same idea. But then again, he's a useful rating. We paid a little bit of money for him. But we've got loads of money knocking around anyway. So if we make a profit, then even better. 
Uh, Jordan Adair. Now again, this was a this was a, a scouting one, a scouting job. They said he was going to be very very good. Unfortunately, he's not turned out to be fantastic since he came in. Uh, stats are not quite as high. It's quite a few of his stats were masked when I signed him, but I thought I'd take the scout's word for it. It was a free transfer anyway. We got him in a free, um, so it wasn't too much of a risk, I suppose. But uh, he has now also gone out on loan to Glasses United, and he's played four games and scored a goal for them already. So you never know. He might have a good season for Glasses, and uh, well, a good end of the season for Glasses, and hopefully get a good player back. Uh, we've got Stefan Kong Inoue, uh, something like that. He's a Cameroonian centre-back. Uh, free transfer once again. He's got decent potential. He was five-star potential with the scouts. He's only three and, a, three and a bit. I don't know what the black star means, but he's three and a bit stars now. So um, hopefully he's going to develop someone quite good. He's got tens in the Holy Trinity of defence anyway. And he's got some good physical and mental attributes. He's only 18, so I'm sure we can build him up into a better player. And the last player we signed was more of a... More of a quick signing just to replace Atundi because I didn't realise Atundi actually got signed after the transfer window had finished. So we got him until the summer anyway. But we brought this guy in to sort of give us a bit more um, choice on that left-hand side. As well as, of course, um, McDermott we just signed, the Irish player. So again, it's a pretty decent looking player. He's got some good stats. He's played one game in the Rock Cup and he's scored on his debut as well. So it can't be too bad. Only 7.10 rating. But I've had a massive problem recently because um, a lot of players have asked to leave. I'm having some issues recently with keeping them happy because if somebody wants to leave, if I say no, it doesn't just annoy the player I've said no to. It, it annoys the entire squad. So it's really been difficult to try and keep people on side. It really has because they've um, the entire squad turned on me. I think now, now that Atundi has a deal agreed to go to Stoke in the summer, he's a bit more happy now. So it shouldn't be too much of a problem. But it's disappointing that, that the whole squad has done that. But And that's why... Um, that's why recently our our results have been 1-0s and things. Look at these 1-0s, that 80 minute goal, 80th minute goal and a 72nd minute goal. And here with 2-0 win with an 87 and a 93rd minute goal. We've really been struggling to get by on this one. And this one as well, we, we had to win with an 86th minute winner. So it's been pretty rocky the last few weeks. But I think everyone's starting to get back on side now. And hopefully uh, we can get rid of the players that don't want to be there. We, it, It's annoying because we've really done a lot of hard work on developing a Tundi into the player he's become. And uh, then again, we're going to get six million quid for him. So I'm sure we can spend that one in the summer. And as I've said, I've already got quite a few players lined up here um, to bring in the summer. But of course, we'll look at them in the summer because they'll probably add to that list before they come in as well. So that is a transfer update for the squad. Of course, we do have that big game against Napoli at home in the first leg of the Europa League. Thankfully, Bruno Romito is now back and fit for this game. So we do have a goalkeeper in our squad. But of course, before that, we have this away league game against Cannon. So let's get straight into that one. And here we are coming into this game. Now, uh, as you can see, we're heavy favourites as normal. Cannons are actually doing quite well. They're actually uh, in fifth place with a couple of games in hand on the club ahead of them. And they can actually go uh, joint third. But, of course, their goal difference is a lot lower than Lincoln Red Imp. So they, they're doing quite well. As I said in the last episode, Glasses are still doing really well. They've uh, lost a few games, including one to us now. So they've dropped away from us. But they're still 11 points ahead of Lincoln in second. And, uh, well, of course, 11 points away from Lincoln in fourth as well. So they're... They're very much uh, up there, and I think they'll be guaranteed that second position. So glasses are looking pretty good this season. Now, team-wise, I tried to play some of the new players, but um, because they're still trying to get match fitness, and they've all been playing for the reserves recently, so they've not, they're not actually uh, ready to play in this game. So we've gone for Romito in goal, who's still trying to build up his match sharpness after that long injury, so hopefully he will be uh, getting a bit of that today. And we're going to play three at the back, so we've got Jim Morrison, who is one of the English players who will be gaining uh, Gibraltar nationality by the end of the season as well. And we've got Kleber Mendes, who's a player who's we brought a few years ago. We brought him back in the 23-24 season. We brought him three years ago, but he's been on loan at um, at Emelec three seasons in a row. And he's just come back, and I've not realised just how much he's progressed over those three seasons he's been away. So he played in the last game, and he's going to be playing here again today. As you can see... That Holy Trinity, the lowest one is heading at 13. So he's actually looking like a really good defender now. He's actually playing for the Ecuador national side as well. So that's pretty good to see. Uh, and then alongside them, it's going to be a debut for Jason Kelly, a player I've never played before. Um, he doesn't even play for the reserves. He doesn't even rate good enough for them. But I really wanted to um, to try him out because his contract expires soon. And I want to see how good he's actually going to be. We have a quite a lot of defenders, so I think we might let him go. But I just thought we'd give him a little bit of uh, time. And plus, I want to save the other defenders for that game against Napoli in a few days as well. Ashley Allen comes in. He's going to play defensive midfield. 
Um, he's just a really utility player, Ashley Allen. He can play a bit of anywhere, really, can't he? Uh, into midfield, we do have one of our new players. It's going to be Dino Connor's going to be having a game. Again, not the best player we've got, but it's going to be his debut. And I want to try and give a few of these players a bit more time on the pitch. Adama JJ is a player who's played eight games so far this season. This is his first season he's really broke into it with us. And he's had a pretty good season, actually. He's uh, done some pretty good stuff. So hopefully he can continue to develop. But then, of course, our forward line is going to be Finn Baird down the left. He's in a bit of an up-and-down season with injuries. Uh, but he's coming right back into it now. We have got uh, Martin Hernandez on the right-hand side. A player I've been trying to develop as much as I can. But I'm starting to think we might have uh, brought a bit of a dead pig there. A bit, a dead pig, a dead dog. I paid 180,000 for him. He's not really uh, done too well so far for us, has he? Uh, Michael Vega, who's also been out on loan at Emelec, who, uh, as you can see, just a fantastic player. He's the one who scored against Barcelona last year for us a couple of times. And then alongside him, Maximiliano Bustamante, another man who recently took Gibraltar nationality. He's still got another two seasons before he can play for the national side. But I think we've got him locked in for a contract for another season. I think I'll lock him in for another one season after that. And then, um, then he should be able to play for the national side, which would be fantastic because he's a pretty damn good player. Look at that finishing and dribbling ability. He's 22 years old as well, so if we can get him in the national side, he's going to get a good sort of 10 years out of him. And uh, he'd be a massive upgrade to what they've got up front already, so I'm really happy about that. As long as he, I don't think he's going to get called up for Argentina, is he? Let's face it. No, no, no offence to him, but he's not the best player in the world, is he? But yeah, that's our squad we're playing today against Cannons. As you can see, a few players that have not played a lot this season, but I want to try and, like I said, give a few players a bit more time on the pitch. Mendes and Vega, the reason they haven't played at all is because, um, obviously, they've only just come back from their loan because um, the team they were playing for, again, a bit like I said earlier on with, uh, with Ireland, they play sort of January through to December rather than where we play uh, August to August or whatever it is. So their season's finished. They've had a full season worth of football. They could be straight back into us as well, but they both seem to have progressed so much for them a couple of years away at that club in Ecuador. So even if we don't get a lot of football out of them, there's still going to be a decent amount of money to be made for selling them on because I think they were both free transfers as well. And Buster Mante, we bring him in every now and again just to keep him happy. Again, I just want to keep a hold of a few of these players like Jim Morrison. Jim Morrison, I'm happy to let him go as soon as he gets the nationality. And Nick Halton, hopefully, is going to get the nationality before, uh, before he leaves to go to Barrow. Oh, JJ hits the crossbar and Vega puts it into the empty net and 10 minutes in, we are 1-0 up away from home. And I don't, this, this glitch, I've, I think I've said about this glitch before, this stand is currently being redeveloped. But for some reason, uh, even though everyone shares the same stadium, it only shows as being redeveloped on certain um, games. I don't know why, all of our home games, the stand is not there. And some of our away games, I think it's all the teams that actually put money towards developing the stadium whenever you play any of them the stand is gone so it's a little bit of a strange one i'm really looking forward to getting that stand finished my only worry is now is that is the stand when it's finished is that going to be shown for everyone or is that just going to show for the teams that donated money towards it because that seems a bit it'll be a little bit annoying if it only showed for certain teams considering we are all sharing the same stadium hernandez bringing the ball forward what have you got mate what can you do he plays it across the pitch and Baird is in a lot of space here. Cuts it into Vega, who's already scored one. Creates himself some space and wallops it right in the top left-hand corner. And that is a second goal of Michael Vega on his first appearance in the season for us. I really like Michael Vega. I think he's a really top-class striker. He's doing really well here as well. Good bit of work there by Baird into Vega. And Vega, there was still a hell of a lot of work for Vega to do. And I think he's... Uh, He's really helped Baird out there. He's given him an assist for what was quite a basic pass, really. Now, Baird taking the, the deep throw-in. Sends it forward to O'Connor. Plays it across to JJ. Plays it forward to Vega once again. Vega is, of course, our target man. He's a big lad. He's doing really well. I really like him, actually. I think for some of the bigger games, I might even... I can't play him against um, Napoli because he's not in our Champions League. So I'm just thinking that he seems to do quite well. And playing a target man when we have the one striker formation seems to work quite nicely. And there's Baird. With a goal of his own, played in by JJ. And that's Baird's seventh goal of the season, which is amazing because he missed such a massive chunk at the beginning through injury. It's great to see him uh, getting this opportunity here and really starting to uh, to put the goals back in. He, he did thank us um, because he was out for about three or four months. And as soon as he got back and as soon as he was fit, we put him straight back in the team. He scored two goals in his first game back. And he, he made the effort to thank us and say, uh, thank you for keeping the faith in me, basically. 
So uh, Vega with the two goals, Baird with one goal and one assist, and of course we've got JJ with the two assists. And we are 3-0 up before half-time. So it looks like we've finally managed to turn this back round now. It was just in January, everyone became unhappy because certain players wanted to leave, and they were all big players, that's the annoying thing. And to lose AD Day and Serge Tundi in the same transfer window, considering those are our two top attacking right midfielders, to lose them both was pretty gutting, really. And I, I went through the transfer market for ages and ages and ages, and I couldn't find any wide attacking right midfielders that were, that were good enough. We found quite a few attacking central midfielders, so the formation might slightly change next year. We might go a bit more with central attacking midfielders, three of them rather than two wide and one central attacking midfielder, because I've got a couple of really good young attacking midfielders coming through. Uh, a couple of Spanish ones and an English one as well, I think. I've obviously got a couple of wide players. We've got McDermott in as well, of course, the player from Sligo Rovers. And um, we've also brought in, of course, the, the South Korean lad, who I, hope, I was hoping to play today. But again, because his match fitness is not 100%, he has been um, playing for the reserves. So he, he's not actually fit to play in this game, which is a bit of a shame. I'm sure we'll see him in the next episode. Uh, of course, he's not going to be in the squad to play against um, Napoli. But luckily, Sergio Tundi is still going to be in the squad to play against Napoli anyway. So, 3-0 we lead here. I'm thinking of making some changes. Bustamante, although he's the captain, is only playing a 6.6. .6, and when we're winning 3-0, your striker should not be in a 6.6. .6. So I think we'll take him off and maybe bring on Eric Franks. Now, let's bring on Frank Banning. He hasn't played for a while. Eric Franks gets a lot of football, I think, normally. So, uh, Bobby Jones, again, is the sort of player that I like. But I've got to a point where I've just not been playing him anymore because... Um, because he's, he's, he's already decided he's leaving in the summer. So I've just sort of left him to one side, really. He's a good backup player to have around. But I'm going to be trying to play Finn Baird and Martin Hernandez where I can. Just to continue to develop them. Because those are the players that are happy to stay with us. But don't get me wrong, I'm happy. We're going to get £6 million for a Tundi. We got £5 million last season for Mashego. So we're really doing well on uh, on turning some profit on these players. A Tundi, like I said, we paid £60,000 for. And we're going to sell him for... Um, for six million so that is a real profit margin that is and of course we can spend the money because the players i brought in for the summer are not very expensive because they're all on the transfer list we've got a couple of players from real madrid coming in as well from their b team and they're all on the transfer list they're worth like over a million but they want one hundred and fifty thousand for them so i was really happy to get those sort of deals in place so uh looks like we are going to win this one a little worrying thing is though we've won three nil away from home of course the same stadium as everyone else plays in though but we've had 14 shots and 42% of the possession, where they've had 11 shots and 59% of the possession. So, although we've got the goals and we're winning the game quite convincingly, it's a little bit, a little bit dodgy seeing the uh, the difference in possession. I'm a little bit worried about that. And I, I've said that before a lot of occasions. We do we get a lot of shots and uh, we're not very clinical. We're putting them away sometimes. But at the same time, um, we very often have a very small amount of the percentage. I'm not quite sure if that's a way that I've uh, got the team set up. And everyone always has a go at us as well for being too aggressive as well. I'm not quite sure why that is because I've not got anything set to, to, to tackle people hard or anything like that. So I'm a little bit uh, surprised by that as well. But there we go. There is a win for us. Michael Vega gets the man the match. His first game of the season for us as well. So that's pretty good. Two goals for him. A rating of 9.0. Baird also had 9.0 as did Adama JJ. Again, JJ's stats are not fantastic. But he seems to be doing very, very well every time he plays for us. So I'm happy with that. So uh, let's have a quick look at the league table. That's going to put us now. We are, we've got, well, Glasgow United have got a game in hand on us, but we are 14 points at the top of the table. I dare say they're not going to catch us up anyway. I dare say we're not going to drop 14 points the rest of the season. So, uh, so yeah, I think we'll probably type the championship pretty soon. I think we will, actually. We've only got a couple of games left, haven't we? Um, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, we've only got a couple of games left. Or one game. No, we've got loads more than one game left. I've just got really confused all of a sudden about how this season works. I don't matter, does it? Let's just, let's go straight into that match now against Napoli at home and see uh, if we can. You never know. We might be able to pull some off. Pull off a big surprise. If we can get a nil-nil draw, I'd be happy because then we can go and try and get a score draw away at Napoli. But yeah, let's go straight into that match now. And here we go. We are heavy, heavy, heavy favourites to get hammered in this one. Um, as you can see, Napoli are one to fourteen to win. We are twenty to one. So I don't think we're going to do too well here, but you know what? We're, we're, we're doing a lot better than what we thought we were. Our target this season was to get to the third qualifying stage of the Champions League, and we are now in the knockout stage of the Europa League. So we've done so well to get where we are. I don't think we're going to get too much further, really, are we? 
Um, who they got anyone we recognise name wise? Um, Perrin is he real? I think he's real. Yeah, yeah, Perrin. Yeah, he's a real player. Um, I don't recognise the defenders. Cubas, I think he uh, Argentinian starts the game at River or something like that. Yeah, a oh, Boca. I've had him in the past on pre previous games. Uh, Gabriel Jesus, that's the player that asked, uh, um, uh, Man City have just purchased, isn't it? Uh, but he's played his... Oh, he's, wow. He's been at uh, Napoli for a long time, hasn't he? He went there from uh, from Palmeiras on this game pretty early on. Uh, Lombards, is that the player who plays for? No, it's a different Lombards. There's a Lombards that plays for Man City at the moment, isn't there? Apart from that, then, I don't recognise anyone else they've got. Um, but who we've got? We've got Romito back in goal. His match sharpness has gone back up as well, so happy to get him. He's wanted. Who's he wanted by now? Crew Alexandra. Rather not lose him, but there we go. Jared Murphy in at left back. I think... Well, I, I like Jared Murphy, actually. I think he's a good player. Uh, we dropped him out of the squad a little bit when we had Evola, but still, he's a good player. I think we'll still keep him. Um, but we do have a couple of new defenders coming in in uh, in the summer as well, both uh, wing backs. So it would be interesting to see if he can keep his place. Uh, into the centre, we have Obef Patino, who now has his Holy Trinity at 10, which is good. He's always had really good mental stats, but he's just getting his technical stats up to match. Uh, alongside him, of course, we have Simplice McKendy, the uh, the Belgian player whose stats are going up as well, so that's good to see. He's got 18 tackling he has now. Jamie Wildman at right back. Again, a player we've had for a good few years now, but um, he's going to struggle to keep his place in the squad. He's only about a year and a half away from getting nationality as well, so we'll definitely keep a hold of him. Um, he might struggle with the new players coming in as well. Anders Broger, of course, the defensive midfielder. We brought him at 16 years old. And he's been such a good player for us. He's really growing into a star now as well. He is wanted as well. Hopefully not by anyone. He's wanted by AAB. Um, but Broger is another one of the players who's taken nationality. So he'll be able to play for them soon. He's got another two years as well. So we can hold on to these players. The whole national side is going to be completely developed in the next couple of years. Alongside him we have a Luis Cabrera who's a really cracking player. I was so surprised when he signed for us. He's wanted now as well by... A player over in a uh, team over in Argentina. I reckon we can get a good amount of money for him. If we got six million for Etundi, I reckon this guy is going to be worth a bit. That's oh no, he's got a minimum release fee. Well, let's put six seven five on there already anyway, and we'll have to try and get him to sign a new contract about a release fee. But that's not a bad release fee actually. If we get that money for him, it was a free transfer. Adama JJ is going to play in this one. I wasn't going to play him in this one, but he's played so well of recent. I, I just couldn't leave him out. He had a nine rating, of course, in that first division game as well. So. He's not the best player we've got in that position, but I think he's definitely in form at the moment. Uh, Finn Baird keeps his place on the left-hand side of the pitch. Um, still, just back, he's come back from injury still. He's, uh, he's struggled a bit this season. Etundi does come in at right midfield. I said I'm trying to play other players at the moment to give them more of a chance, but you can't leave this guy out. His stats are fantastic, and he could be the difference between getting us a couple of goals in this one. And then up front, we have Joe Stevens, a player we brought from in from Leicester. Um, he's, he's, it shows he's only played eight games. But of course, that's only eight league and uh, league games, isn't it? Yeah, league and league and uh, a league and substitute appearances. Of course, all the Europa League and Tran uh, Champions League stuff doesn't seem to count on that list. But but there we go. Yeah, let's go for it and see what we can do. Of course, we still only have one goalkeeper in the squad. I didn't want to change it too much because I know we. Ah, oh, oh, sorry. That's just that's just force a habit. That is. That's just going to make things worse, isn't it? Let's force a habit. I just, I'm just so used to hitting. Um, we need to win this one. We should win this one. That I just kept doing it again. So we're playing a structured, standard style. So hopefully we can hold off and not concede too many goals. Because I'm pretty sure we're going to lose this game across two legs. But I don't want to get destroyed. A bit like normal, really. I, I don't want to get hammered by Napoli over two legs. If they beat us four, five nil across the two legs, that that's that's fine. But I don't want to be getting into the range of like ten nil or something stupid like that. A bit like what we did to Stal Bucharest. But we've held on for the first 10 minutes. And they haven't even had a shot yet. Which is good. Well, the longer this... Oh, Patino's injured. What's wrong with him? He's got a bruised rib. That might be... That might be the sort of one we need to bring him off. He's, well, his condition's going back up, so he might be okay. Now, they have a throw-in. As you can see, again, the stand has disappeared from the last game. That should be done very, very soon. It may even be done in time for the second leg, which is obviously going to be away, so it doesn't really matter, does it? But we might be able to see it in the... Oh. We might be able to see it in the uh, in the league game in the next episode. So that is 1-0 to them. Kenny Justin, Justin uh, picks up the goal. Bit of a shame. Bit of a shame for us, but it's, uh, 
18 minutes we held on for, so it's not too bad. Like I said, as long as we don't lose, like, 10 in the aggregate, we should be okay. That slam is going to look so cool when it's done, because if you've seen the size of the building, I'm, I'm assuming that's how big it is going to be roughly be. And then if we can then continue to, to improve the size of it. I don't know whether just to continue trying to improve the size of this stadium first before we... I, obviously, I think we'll try and build our own stadium again and see if it comes off or not, but... At the moment, we've tried it once and we got uh, refused by planning permission. So we'll try it again. It would be so good if we can get our own stadium. Because then we'll be able to really um, be able to do what we want then. Because we can't even have pre-season friendlies at the moment. Because it's so difficult to get the stadium pinned down for a certain amount of time. Lombards is in. It's saved. And Wilman clears it away. And they've got a corner from that. So we're around about the half an hour mark with 1-0 down. Gabriel Jesus with the corner headed clear by Atundi. Baird tried to get there, but I think he got pushed out the way a bit there. So again, this is this is a team that are, that are very much ahead of where we are at the moment, uh, Napoli. They've got some really fantastic players worth quite a lot of money. Patino's playing a 6.2, and I'm not quite sure that's because of his bruised rib. Where he's just having a bad game as well. We might have to take him off at some point. Oh, they've scored a second. Nezevic. Like I said, it's not it's not a mad it's not a bad thing. I was like I said, we've got so much further than what I ever thought we were going to this season anyway. So uh, losing to, to Napoli is not a bad thing really. But I just like I said before, I want to make sure we don't get hammered. And that that just shows the difference that the five shots, two on target, two goals. That's that's the one thing that we need to improve on. I think. And I think next season... Oh, Joe Stevens is injured now as well. What's happened to Stevens? Oh, Stevens is completely gone. Okay. And Eric Franks. Or Banning. Or ba Why have we got three strikers on the bench? Four oh, it's Bayers then. Bayers, of course. Why have we got four strikers on the bench? I don't even know. That's just the way that I did the Champions League sword. I don't know how I, I don't know why I ended up with that many players. We're going to have a bit of a purge there. When, when some players will be leaving in the summer, um, I want to try and clear it out a little bit. The squad. And hopefully we've got a few more players that will gain Gibraltar nationality as well. And we'll be able to use them as homegrown players. Then players like Bustamante, I think, counts as homegrown. Um, Romito is now homegrown, I think, because he's been here for so long. So that, that's pretty good, at least. Uh, every year gets a little bit easier when we get a few more homegrown players. Because last season... We had to do the squad with eight less players because we had no homegrown players. And we have to have that. Um, we have to either have the homegrown players or leave that space in the squad free. So we really struggled with a tiny squad last year. But that's why we rest so many players during the league, I suppose. So there we go. 2-0 down at half time. Let's say calmly. Oh, apparently we've not been good enough. So let's say assertively. Um, I don't want to say it was absolutely terrible, but maybe calmly I expect better. Show me something else in the second half. There we go. That, that's fired him up. Apart from two players, Finn Baird is demotivated, as is Jamie Wilman. The two players that have been booked. Okay. But if being booked is what's going to make you uh, demoralised, then that's not my fault. Even if we, if we got a sneaky goal here, or sneaky two goals, or sneaky five goals, that'd be great. If we've got a sneaky couple of goals, you never know. We could, uh, we could make it a little bit more interesting in the second leg. We do have a highlight. Broger. Oh, he's giving it away. I know it wasn't his fault. That was JJ's fault, I think. But still. Oh, come on. Uh, Patino should have got there for that one. It's a good save. It wasn't a very good shot. We think we're lucky there. But Patino was looking a bit a bit dodgy there in defence. I think we are going to have to bring him off. He's playing a 5.9. He's going to have to come off, isn't he? So who do we have on the bench? We have Nick Hylton. Not the best defensive choice in the world, but... Although, we could move back Cabrera, I think. And then we'll bring Philippe on. I think that might be the best way of doing things. Cabrera's not, he's not the best defender in the world. But at the same time, I think it's going to be better having him there than it would be having, um, having Nick Carlton. I really hope Nick Carlton, because if he leaves and he's like 15, 20 days short of becoming Gibraltarian, I'm going to be so annoyed. We'll have to try and loan him back just so we can, uh, just so we can get him back in the country for a few days. Because, uh, say, he's, he he took the nationality because he wanted to play for the national side, and it's just so close, isn't he? 
I'm just trying to figure it out. Like, it might be enough. It's not going to be enough, is it? He had 150 days and it was about five months, so it's going to be really tight, isn't it? Really tight. Not too bad though. Still two 0 down on the 75th minute, so we're we're not going to be hammered here, like I said. Um, we make one more substitute. Maybe bring on. Oh, we got no one. Oh, we can bring on Bernal in place of JJ, who's struggling now anyway. So Bernal can get a bit of football. Nobody necessarily has played very well today. That's that's the problem. I don't mind getting. I don't mind losing, but I still want to play well in the process. We're going to get 50% of possession. I don't concede a third now, though, because that'll be... We've done so well to keep it at 2-0 in the second half. Don't concede a third now. Good bit of defence there. Tundi couldn't get there for the tackle. It's gone back out to a matter. We've got everyone behind the ball at the moment. He does poke it in for a third. Nezovic. Well, like I said, I don't mind too much losing 5-6-0 on aggregate across the two games, but I don't want to be losing by, like, 10 goals or anything like that. So as long as we... Don't lose 7 0 at Napoli, we should be okay. But we've been put in our place. I, I, I said it was going to happen. We were always going to struggle in this game. Napoli is a big, big side. One of the top sides in Europe now, I think, actually. They're Champions League every single season, aren't they? So they're a, they're a good team. So that is 3 0. Good header clear by McKendy. Oh, blow the whistle, ref. Blow the whistle. Don't blow the whistle, ref. Ah. Oh. That was a counter-attack, that was. So there we go. 3-0 loss against Napoli. Um, let's say calm. Uh, we were unlucky. That's gained them all confidence. That might help them in the second leg. You never know. Uh, but yeah, of course, next episode we are going to have... We're going to have the home game against Glasses United in the first division. That's going to be a tricky one because Glasses are doing very, very well in that, uh, in that division. The second place by quite some chunk of time. And then, of course, we are going to have that game against Napoli as well. And also, we must be getting very, very close to having our youth players come through. So uh, maybe we'll manage to encompass that in the next episode as well. Um, let's have a look. The stadium is going to be finished in the 5th of March. We're not going to see that next episode. We probably will see it um, towards the end of the season. Now, I'm looking forward to seeing our brand new stadium. We can't do anything else, can we? You know, facilities, we can do youth facilities and that. Our youth facilities have been improved, so hopefully we can get some good youth players through this year. Even ones that are not going to be good enough to play for us, but we'll keep a hold of them, develop them, and then obviously try and move them on to some of the other clubs. Because we do have Magpies as a feeder club. So we can always, um, if we get some good young players, we can loan them all out to Magpies and try and get Magpies up the league as well. Try and boost them up a little bit. Um, but yeah, that'll be the next episode, of course. Um, so as always, if you have enjoyed this episode, then please let me know by hitting that like button. It does really help me out. And of course, if you are new around here, be sure to hit that subscribe button as well. Also, in the description below, there is a link to the uh, the Europa Point Twitter page and Facebook page. So go over there and have a check them out as well. It's so fun to see after playing this um, this playthrough to go and have a look at the real state of the football over there. It's so fun to see because you recognise the names, you know all the teams now. It's so much fun to look at and I've been starting to, uh, to really keep to try and keep up with Gibraltarian football. So it's really good. Uh, I've been Shabby Gamer, thank you very much for watching, and I shall see you all in a couple of days' time for that second leg against Napoli. <laughs>